Brothers and sisters, good evening. And I hope and pray you are keeping safe and healthy during these uh, difficult times. Um, it's uh, very important that we still come together as a body, as a community, so that we can pray together, we can join each other in you know, still praising our God and worshiping our God despite the difficult times. And so uh, before also I forget, uh, let me remind everybody that we will have our cluster prayer assembly this Saturday, uh, 1.30 via Zoom. We'll do it online. Uh, and we ask uh, all of the, our household leaders to invite all your members. We are not restricted. We can have up to... 500 join us in the Zoom meeting. We um, made that one of arrangement to increase our participants from to exceed the 100 usual limit that uh, we have in Zoom. Anyway, brothers and sisters, uh, let us uh, start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord our God, we are your army we are your servants lord we come to you as a body tonight to have a special prayer as always we pray lord that um and we join all the others who are praying during this time of crisis lord that you protect all of us the members of our family the members of our community all of us here in, in Melbourne and in Australia and all over the world, especially those who are sick, Lord. And we, uh, ask, I ask everybody to join me in this uh, prayer, Horatio Imperata, which has been um, uh, ordered by the Catholic Bishops, uh, Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, which I think is applicable for us as well. So let's all together join in this prayer god our father we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the 2019 n coronavirus that has claimed lives and has affected many we pray for your grace for the people tasked with studying the nature and cause of the virus and its disease and of stemming the tide of its transmission guide the hands and minds of medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. And of those governments and private agencies that must find cure and solution to this epidemic. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Grant us the grace to work for the good of all and to help those in need. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Mary, help of all Christians, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Blessed Mary Makilop, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Luis, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calunsod, pray for us. We also say a special prayer for Jomar Salumbides, who was the, a CFC full-time pastoral worker. He passed away a few, days, a few days ago. He served as well here in Melbourne as well. Lord, we ask you to welcome Jomar to your kingdom. May he rest in peace. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening again. Tonight, we will do talk five, Zeal for Righteousness. It is a, uh, it is a difficult teaching, I think, uh, but... Uh, it is good uh, for us. I'm sure we will learn a few things here. We may be able to reflect also how we measure against uh, our zeal for uh, righteousness. And uh, our speaker for tonight is Marcy Michon, a member of the CFC Australia National Council and uh, head of pastoral formation. Marcy? Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you, Marcy. Okay, good evening, and uh, welcome to this teaching. And like, uh, I'd like to share my yeah. screen with you, just so you don't have uh, the suffering of seeing my face all the time. <laughs> Anyone can see that? Yeah, all good. All good. Zeal for Righteousness, Corpus for Christ, Household Leaders Training, talk number five. That's our corporate number. That's our website. I hope uh, you put that on your home website so we can get as much hit as possible. Right? Um, yeah, my... My wife is Susan, she's not here with me, but uh, <laughs> I think I have uh, re rehearsed this talk over and over with her. So uh, let us begin. Zeal for righteousness, right? And uh, I'd like to Did you see the next screen? Introduction righteousness righteousness or goodness but before all of this by the way today is the feast of saint joseph we remember our earthly fathers who raises us up we remember joseph as the just among all men that's uh, how he was introduced in the bible that he is uh, the, the 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 just person in all the bible remember how he accepted mary and how he listened and obeyed God through an angel who appeared before him in dreams. And um, I would surmise that during his lifetime, right, Blessed Mother Mary must have been a dutiful wife uh, to Joseph. And um, when we know he died, he was probably, he probably died in the arms of Mother Mary and Jesus. Um, but Joseph is a just man, and um, I'll I'll get down to that. And it, it is it is really appropriate that uh, <clears throat> we're having this zeal for righteousness on the feast day of uh, Saint Joseph. I think uh, it is also uh, the desire of the Holy Spirit to be able to give this gift. But let's move on. Uh, righteousness or goodness in. Uh, the first book of John, chapter 3, verse 7, he defines righteousness as he who does right is righteous, as he, Christ, is righteous. Now, that definition of what righteousness is, is not just simply the good in us. It's not just simply good, doing justice or doing good. It is, you know, it is speaks of uh, the righteousness as Christ is righteous. In other words, there is a model there. You know, there is a there is a, a benchmark by which that righteousness is measured. The second word, zeal, is about an eager desire, a fervor. And I have also, if it is a desire, I have my favorite um, verse here. It's in Luke chapter eleven, verse nine. And he says, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. All right? Yes, yes, son. How are you? 
right? Um, a word on this, you know, uh, if it is an eager desire, then it is also Jesus' command. Jesus commands us to desire it. Jesus commands us to be able to ask for those things that he wants us to have. And, um, and, and I believe that desiring goodness, desiring goodness means these three things. You cannot desire, you cannot begin to desire something if you have not yet slightly tasted it. Uh, I know, you know, some people are able to desire abstractly, right? But, you know, um, somehow uh, in our, in our, in the deepest corners of our desires, it is about God allowing us, you know, to desire them first in you. You could not have such desires if God had not already desired them first in you, for you, and as you. In other words, a zeal for righteousness is a desire to be righteous in Jesus' principles, in Jesus', uh, uh, in Jesus uh, character, but also it is a desire that God has put in us, for us, and as us. Therefore, he says in 2 Corinthians 5, chapter 20 to 21, he's saying, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God is making an appeal through us. God made him who knew no sin to be seen on our behalf, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That's very nice, isn't it? That's very nice. That's a very nice saying. And um, the desire to be the desire to be righteous, right, has uh, the following the following uh, the following principles. First, in two Corinthians five twenty to twenty one, he says, "We are ambassadors." Paul, Saint, this is Saint Paul talking, and his companions. They not only spoke on behalf of Christ but their lives represented Christ's life and character. Uh, that's different, yeah? We can talk, they're not, they're not just there to talk and talk about Christ, but their lives, their very lives represented Christ's life and character. They were charged as representatives of Christ that will present the message of God's plan to save the world, yeah? Um, Christ has an agenda. Christ live and he has an agenda and that agenda is God's plan God's plan to save the world uh, the second principle there the righteousness of God the righteousness of God through Christ's death and resurrection God demonstrated his righteousness by judging sin yet showing mercy to sinners you know Paul here is perhaps describing the character, the righteous character of God. And he's saying, you know, believers should be able to live out their lives accordingly, according to this character of God. And what is that character of God? Huh? That he gave his only son to die for our sins so that we may live. To die to oneself. That is God's character of what righteousness is all about. Right? The God's the God's righteousness, righteous character, it, it borders on, on, on how Christ lived and died and resurrected on the cross. That that righteousness here is uh, a two prong, uh, and this is the connection to uh, to Saint Joseph. That that righteousness word, the cashone, means justice and righteousness. You know. The quality of being in accordance with God's law, that, that's what it means. And, you know, and, and Joseph was it. Joseph was just. Joseph is justice. He is the dikashone of God. Right? So, we move on. And, uh, oops. We, therefore, putting this in principle, right? Putting this in perspective, right? The, the desire, the eagerness, you know, 
that God has put in us to be able to be righteous, righteous in the character of Jesus, in fact, righteous in the, in the character of God's righteousness. We must then be men and women who passionately want to promote God's kingdom on earth. Thus, our hearts should be troubled whenever we find anything that is not right with God. It should give us the passion that let those who love the Lord hate evil. That if we love the Lord this much, we, have, we hate evil. God hates evil in this world. Uh, uh, if I go back to that, to that uh, 1 John 3 to 7, you know, uh, John expressed how, uh, how Jesus' character hates evil. Uh, he's saying that, you know, um, you know the, the, greatest, the greatest mistake that one can have is to allow evil to motivate you to be in opposition with God. Right? The, the opportunity of evil in our lives allows us to be in opposition with God. And that's why, you know, uh, if we have to do good, if we have to do what God is asking us to do, then we must hate evil. Right? That's, uh, that's the thing. And, and there are four kinds of good, four kinds of good people. That do no evil, do no good. Do no evil, do good, but no passion. Do no evil, do good with passion, but no zeal for righteousness. Do no evil, do good with passion, and zeal for righteousness. What is common among all of these four? You know, they all do no evil. But doing no evil doesn't mean it is in the character of the righteousness of God. Doing, doing no evil, you know, explains that we must go beyond doing no evil. If we are doing no evil and doing no good, maybe that's just Sunday Christians. We pray and pray, but uh, you know, uh, we, we hide uh, among, um, we hide from other people. We hide from, uh, from the sufferings of this world and you know, we just live in our comfort life, etc. Do no evil, do no good. Do no evil, do good, but no passion. Maybe you're doing a little bit of good. Maybe you're doing the parish uh, round. Maybe you're helping them as far as uh, uh, the parish work is concerned. But you know, you're doing it as a matter of duty, as a matter of, you know, uh, if I don't do this, I'll go to hell. Or if I do this, you know, uh, I will be uh, sanctioned by my community, you know. I have to follow the rules. I have to follow the law. I have to go to the motion of uh, doing good. But there is no passion in it. And that goes to the third one. You do evil. You Sorry, do Marcy. Good. Yep. We don't see your four goods. Uh, the four. Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry about that. I thought, yeah. But do no good. Do no evil. Do no good. Do no good. Do evil. Etc. Okay, sorry, oops. How do I go back? Do you know you, yeah, there, there you go. All right, can you see them now, huh? right? Yeah. Do you know do good, but no passion. Do you know good, do good, it's the same, right? But, you know, I was on the third. Do no evil, but do good with passion, but no zeal for righteousness. Uh, in other words, you, you probably, you know, do no evil. You, you do good to the people, you know, around you. You do good uh, as far as uh, the community is concerned. There is a good relationship with you and all the others. You, know? um, you go on mission maybe because uh, you're passionate about this love of God. Uh, so you do on mission. You, you go everywhere else. But there is no seal for righteousness. In other words, uh, if you see something that is not good, if you see something that is evil, you just tend to sweep it under the carpet. You know? uh, turn a blind eye, look the other way, you know, or maybe uh, uh, and do and do this. Uh, what to call this? Do this um, this thing about uh, 
everything is relative. Everything is relative to you, man. You know, they're having, they're aborting the child, you know, or maybe, you know, there's a reason why they do that. You're doing good with passion, you know, you're, you're, you're serving, you're, you're loving your neighbor, you're in relationship, good relationship with them. <clears throat> but then, you know, <clears throat> when you see a sin, you just turn a blind eye about it. You just don't listen. And the fourth one <clears throat> is what we all should be. The do no evil, do good with passion, and zeal for righteousness. It's not enough that we do no evil. It's not enough that we good, do good with passion. You know, follow exactly the covenant of Corpus for Christ. But there is a third one, and that is the zeal for righteousness. And that is the eagerness to be able to follow the principle that Christ has put before us of what good means. And in 1 John 3, 7, it means the righteousness of God. Okay. So, there you go. So, what does Jesus expect of us? What does Jesus expect of us? Uh, yeah, Lord, uh, there's a lot of things that um, we need to do. There's a lot of evil in the world around us. There's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, evil virus that are living within us. But so what does it do? See a need, feel a need. Uh, and uh, I would like to quote Mary McKillop here. Never see a need without doing something about it. As a leader, we are proactive. Akiki alam. We're not supposed to be armchair leaders. We are listening, caring, and doing leadership. We are, oh, sorry. We are listening, caring, and doing leaders. It's not enough that we listen. It's not enough that we care. Okay, I'll pray for you. And that's it. But we have to be doing leaders. Uh, servant leadership more than anything else, you know, is, is number one here. If there has to be a servant leadership, then that our leadership should see a need and feel a need. Yeah. It's like the good shepherd. It's like Jesus, you know, uh, when Jesus was telling us that, you know, I have a hundred sheep and one went away. I have to get out of my way because there is a need to feel, to save that last sheep. And that's what we are. Yeah. That's what we are. I... I, I think that this story about seeing a need, feeling a need, is also Mother Teresa's um, motto or slogan. You know? uh, I remember my grandson asking me, uh, Tito Ma, Lolo Marcy, he says, uh, what is your slogan? And he says, why do you ask me? Oh, Quanta says a slogan. We get home every day. <laughs> All right. He says, what is your slogan? Well, see a need, feel a need. That's my slogan. And if I see a need that uh, I need to be there, I mean, I'll do it. I'll feel it as much as I can, as much as I can do it. Second, right? We don't need a permission to do good. When we see an opportunity to do good, we act on it as leaders. We don't hesitate. Sometimes you might err in the process of doing good. Oh, no, we're not perfect individuals, right? Sometimes we put the, our foot on our mouth, so to speak, right? And, uh, you know, uh, we, we made a bad call, right? But we saw a need, we feel it, and we did something about it, rather than just simply, you know, un being unmindful of it. Right? We have to do good. We, 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 and, and I think, and I think um, sometimes my peers uh, would probably uh, comment this on me. You know, Marcy, you're too aggressive. <laughs> oh, Marcy, you're too, uh, you're too, uh, you're too quick to act. Uh, why don't we just, you know, why don't we just step back for a while, etc., and, and look at the situation? You know, I, I, I believe that you know, um, if the Holy Spirit is with us, if we pray, when we are close to Jesus, the Spirit will lead us where we want to go, or even. And I've said this time and time again, the Holy Spirit can correct even our crooked ways. 
what is important is that we see a good, we see a need, we feel a need, we have to do good. And we do good, you know, according to the dictates of our conscience, according to the, our discernment, according to our prayer and all that. Huh? Zeal for righteousness stems from the very basis of our Christianity, namely love of God and love of neighbor. I'm reminded, I'm reminded of this. <coughs> Excuse me. When I was in um, Adelaide last week, I asked that question. He says, uh, how many, do you love Jesus? And they all raised their hands. <laughs> now, of course we love Jesus. Or do we really love Jesus? Do we really love God as far as our own being, our own capacity is concerned? Are we a fan or a follower of Jesus? And he says, you know what? Uh, Jesus has just one, Jesus has just uh, one, uh, one condition. He says, if you love me, you will follow my commandments. And what is that? Love God above all things, with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole strength. And the second one is like the first. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Uh, and the love of God and the love of neighbor is the, the translation of 613 commandments in the old Torah. And when he said this to this, uh, to this uh, young fellow, he was so sad. Yeah, because uh, you know he 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 was uh, he, he was saying yeah truly you have you have said the word and says and if you do that if you do all this come follow me sell everything you have and come follow me this is what it means to love Jesus he says it, he says it himself you know love of God and love of neighbor but come. Follow me, take up your cross, and be a follower of Jesus. So, number one, love of God for oneself and others is the way to righteousness. Love of neighbor for material, spiritual happiness, but also for eternal salvation. In other words, I love my neighbor. I want the best in him. I want the best in them. I want them, you know, uh, spiritual happiness as well. I want them to have, uh, uh, to set their hearts right. But also, I love them to bring them to eternal salvation. What did this say? Our uh, household head motto should be, it is uh, to bring all your members to heaven with you. Uh, don't forget yourself, you know. We have to bring our members to heaven. That was our greatest calling. That is our greatest desire. But look at number three. Mourn if God is dishonored or disobeyed by himself or others. Uh -huh. So, you know, um, you were in the office and uh, some people, you know, uh, talk about... Uh, Oh, you know, the church, you know, this Catholic church, they're no good. They're, you know, all their priests are, 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 are in uh, disobedience to God, etc. Do you defend? Do you say something about it? Or maybe not say something about it, but does your action, but does your practice, does your witnessing allow them to think that this is uh, not could not own with you. I, I remember um, it used to be that you know um, the, the people around us, we, we come to the office, the people, we, we pray in the office and the people around us suddenly see that you know we are a God-fearing, we are a God-loving uh, person. And because they see that in us, you know, they will not dishonor God or disobey in front of us. Right? And that's something that says a statement that is a statement that says you know this is what i am this is what i am we mourn if god is dishonored or disobeyed by himself or others not only through words but through also through our practices 
As leaders, of as leaders, love of neighbor demands that they act in God's behalf. We should act in God's behalf. We are the ambassadors of Christ. We are the representatives. We are not just there only to say things. We are there as representatives of Christ. We are there as representatives of God. Right? In other words, if you look into all of these things, it's not enough that we do good. It is called, we are all called upon to do something more than that. Four things. Love of God for oneself and others. Love of neighbor for material and spiritual happiness. But also for eternal salvation. Bring them to heaven. Mourn if God is dishonored or disobeyed by himself or others. Not only in words, but also in your action, but also in your witnessing. And as leaders, love of neighbor demands that we act in God's behalf. That we are ambassadors of Christ. We attended uh, a retreat about you know uh, two years ago, and we mentioned about this Saint Ignatius of Loyola, the Magis. And the Latin meaning the more Magis embodies the act of discerning the greater good in a given situation to better glorify or serve God. Magis does not mean always to or give more to the point of exhaustion. Magis is the value of striving for the better. Striving for excellence. In other words, as leaders, you know, the zeal, our zeal for righteousness should go beyond, you know, what the world dictates. Our model should be Christ. Our model should, and our task is to bring about God's righteousness, the righteousness of God in all the people. And that's going even one more step, one more, one, one more, one more rung, one more mile, you know. And, you know, as a leader, we need to think about how we can do that. It's not enough that we go day by day and, you know, do only what is required, you know. But we need to go beyond our strength, beyond what we are, right? No, achieving the zeal for righteousness. How, how, how do we achieve that? How do we achieve uh, the zeal for righteousness? Uh, there are for the self and for others. Right? For the self, we can only achieve the zeal for righteousness through spiritual growth. In other words, we need to study what we don't know, we cannot give. Right? What we don't know, we cannot, you know. Uh, what we don't know, knowing God, right, is the first step of loving God. You know, knowing Jesus is the first step of loving Jesus, and that is that is spiritual growth. You know, uh, especially during this Lenten season, when we are working from home, or when we are, for example, uh, locked down. What do we do? Open the scriptures, open the Bible, read the commentaries, learn what is there to learn. Because knowing Jesus is the first step to loving Jesus. And again, you know, the desire for spiritual growth is something that is there, is something that is given by God in us. You know? Active participation in the life of the church. You know, uh, and the church is, you know, any grouping of of uh, Christians that that believe in the same in the same belief that you are. It's not only the institutional church, you know. Caucus for Christ. Your household is a church. Your chapter is a church. Your cluster is a church. You know. Uh, I'm not talking here only of the institutional church. The active participation in the life of the church means you know all those assemblies, all those teachings, all those fellowship as well, etc. And this is how you, 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 you get yourself exposed you know, to practicing the zeal for righteousness. You know, if, you just, if you're just a household you know, uh, 
you're just a household leader and you know i will only live in my household many of you will say that i don't care about the assemblies etc i will just stick to my little household then you don't give yourself the opportunity to be able to be an ambassador for christ to other people to a wider area you know um, you don't get you, you you don't you lose that opportunity to bring Christ to others more than just your household. Huh? Also, the frequent reception of the sacraments. The sacraments are the grace that makes us holy. The sacraments are the grace that allows us the strength to become righteous. The sacraments are there and they give grace. So what is grace? Grace is gift. You know, uh, when we talk about how are we going to uh, achieve grace, it's, it's, it's a gift to all of us. It's the gift that, you know, uh, that we receive every time we, we, we take the Eucharist, every time that uh, we, go to, we go to confession, every time that uh, we, we practice um, the sacraments. And these are the life-giving, these are the life-giving grace that that is upon us and the third one on the self is excuse the spelling faithfulness to the covenant of Corpus of Christ look no further one way that we are going to achieve the zeal for the zeal for righteousness is right there in your covenant card the faithfulness to the covenant of CFC and 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 that that hello uh, and that is the way to you know to to bringing that self in, in in the light of in the light of what christ expects of us in terms of uh, in terms of the principles of righteousness that christ embodies However, for the others, selflessness. You know, we need for if we need to serve others, we need to to be selfless. We need to we need to deny ourselves. We need to humble ourselves and say that the others may be served by seeing the humility in all of us, by seeing how we sacrifice, by seeing how we deny ourselves how we die to ourselves so that others may be. This is exactly, you know, God's plan. This is exactly that, you know, when, when God brought us and, and he brought his son here on earth to die on the cross and to resurrect, this is actually what he is telling us, that the example of Jesus is selflessness. The example of Jesus that brings love first and foremost is an act of humility an act of dying on the cross. And I put that there, correction, right? Uh, we should not be bashful about correcting others if that correction is done out of love. Right? Encouragement as well. We should be able to encourage, we should not be able to correct only the bad ones. We should be able to encourage and appreciate the good ones. Because this is what you know, God is calling us. What did they say? Fellowship is harvery. When iron sharpens iron, when when we come together in uh, in love, when we encourage people to to experience that love that we have for them and appreciate them, uh, and, and and persevere with them, then this is something that you know uh, will achieve righteousness for other people. Relationships. God does not call us to grow in number, uh, but God calls us to be excellent in our relationships with one another. Right? Achieving the zeal for righteousness means always looking for that relationship ex opportunity to be able to talk. You know, when when I was talking about this in uh, in. Uh, in a husband and wife intimacy, for example, uh, when the husband says, how are you? 
the killer is the one word, I'm fine, thank you, and that's it. You don't, you don't build relationships that way. Uh, you, it, building relationships means you become interested with one another. You become interested with what they know, with how they feel, etc. And that's the kind of you know, uh, interaction that we have for, for other people, for other people. That we just, you know, when, when we when we meet each other on the train pla on the platform of the train, we just you know, we have to avoid each other. No, we we are we are sincerely uh, wanting to have, you know, to be able to talk with each other, to be able to feel what others are doing, to be able to uh, find out how what are how are they feeling right now. In in, in the in the case of uh, the coronavirus, for example, we want to ensure that, you know, uh, I, I, I did tell you a story. I remember uh, it was, I think, uh, Chino Gage who discovered uh, something about, you know, uh, a truckload of toilet paper. And he says, lo and behold, I was there and I bought a lot. And he, and he messaged me and says, Tito Mazi. Do you want uh, some toilet paper? <laughs> and I was laughing and I said, uh, uh, maybe, but you know, I, I think we should do that. I think we should, you know, uh, be able to encourage one another or help one another that you know if they if they need our help, you know, that we can probably go to the supermarket for them, that we can, you know, probably offer the excess surplus that we have, you know, so that they don't have to 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 fear. That's the kind of relationship that we have. And the, our relationship does not only touch on the on the on the sacred or spiritual things. Our relationship with one others even touch it touches even our emotions, even how we feel as far as each other is concerned. And finally, fellowship. As I said, and I think I I blurted out a while ago. You know, it's iron that sharpens iron. You know, when we come together, fellowship is not just a simply eating. <laughs> fellowship means, you know, uh, we come together and we give warmth to one another. We give uh, happiness by our presence. That's why, you know, our assemblies are important. Not because, you know, we, we just want to, we just want you to be there for the simple reason of that's the rule or that's the covenant. But we want you to be there so that we can sharpen each other so that we can you know talk to each other about our lives about you know our household about our children about our you know uh, dreams about our desires that's that's fellowship that's how we are that's how we are sharpened by the presence of one another look if it is only you who is doing the work of god then it must be a very lonely <laughs> journey and i don't think you know god wants you to be that lonely i think no one of us can say we are an island in ourselves i think we need that fellowship we need that presence and when we say i only need it for my household and this only my household that needs the fellowship we have fellowship with one another in my household then you're missing the opportunity to find that righteousness in other people as well, in a bigger, in a wider circle that couples for Christ has given you as a community, right? And sometimes we pray, we pray a lot, you know, God, thank you for couples for Christ. And he says, thank you, thank you for what? Thank you for giving us an opportunity to show our love to Jesus more than if we just alone and praying. Thank you for an opportunity for Topos for Christ, for giving us warm bodies that represent Christ in all of our days. Right. Achieving the zeal for righteousness, as I said, the extra mile. Uh, these are the basic things. You know, punctuality in meetings. Uh, let's be practical. You know, if our meeting, if, if you're not punctual in our meetings, then there is a feeling that you know the meetings are not important to you right? but punctuality is something that you know demonstrates zeal 
something that demonstrates what needs to be done as far as our making sure. Exercise of spiritual gifts, you know. I used to be with the Singles for Christ and one time we were riding in a bus and all of us were on a bus on the way to, uh, I think it was uh, Canberra or something like that. And one said, you know, I have a headache. And suddenly all 30 people in the bus raised up their hands and, <laughs> and, and put their hands together and they're all praying, etc. Lord, you know, heal our sister as far as her heart, as far as her headache is concerned. The exercise of spiritual gifts, if you don't exercise the spiritual gifts, that's something that can be taken away from you as well. Okay, you know that. You know, and sometimes you may, you know, probably uh, you may you probably have the inkling or the the nudging from the Holy Spirit to be able to say a prophetic word, and then you just kept quiet because you don't know the English of it because you don't know how to say it. But exercise of spiritual gifts is something that exposes us to that zeal, you know, to that zeal. But exercise of I mean, healing, for example, you know, we can all be used to heal. We can all be used to say prophetic words. We can all be used for the good of the community to do all of those spiritual gifts that has been given to us by the Holy Spirit. Third, right? Financial support for CFC. I think it is important that, you know, we support CFC financially. You know, you know uh, the financial, the financial tights that we have, or, or the resource sharing that we have, all comes to good use. All comes to uh, mission work. You know, and and this is something that you know uh, demonstrates our zeal for what the community represents to us. Submission to headship, obedience to your headship, to your heads. You know, sometimes I myself sometimes you know do not agree with my with my heads or maybe or some or, or my peers. But you know, when the decision is done, then there must be submission. I think this is something that you know should be inculcated uh, uh, quite heavily as leaders. As leaders, you don't lord it over all, right? Remember what Jesus said. The first among you should be the servant of the others. The one who is great among you, you know, should be able to serve other people, the others in your, in your community. I think submission to headship is more than just a simple task. It, it, it is, it is, it, submission to headship isn't just merely a task. Submission to headship is being who you are. As a follower of Christ, submission to headship is is about being rather than doing. We can argue, we can you know agree to disagree, but when the time comes, you know, and we have to submit, then we submit. I don't think I have to tell you already that submission to headship, the non-submission to headship, is something that brings this unity to the community and what did jesus was praying lord make them united just you and i are united that was in the last supper when jesus was praying for his apostles make them all united the same prayer that we have if we have to foster unity among all of us then there must be submission to them there must be that humble submission to our headship the avoidance of critical spirit or attitude. And this is, you know, uh, probably my cross. This is probably something that I need to offer to towards Lent. You know, um, sometimes uh, in 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 my prayer, I, I am critical about. You know, uh, I have a critical spirit. You know, the simple simple things that I I disagree with. I think this is something that we need to struggle. This is something that we need to pray for. Yeah, uh, and and what is it? You know, it is uh, when we are avoiding the being a critical spirit, then the gift of the spirit of gentleness, self control will be there. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and gentleness are the fruit of the spirit that allows us 
that, that, that is given to us, you know, when we submit to that zeal for righteousness, when we you know, practice all of this. The, in other words, there is just you know, one sentence that sums it all up. Being excellent in your relationships with one another. And I think it's important to do that. Let us do two things, right? Um, the, the example or the, the, the zeal for righteousness uh, can, can be shown uh, in two principles. The principles of correction inside the community and the principles of encouragement. Let us go to the correction first. At the heart of scriptural appreciation for correction is a hatred for sin and a realization of human fallibility. We're all human. We're all non-perfect. Right? But, you know, uh, in, in this word, let a righteous man strike me, that is kindness. Let him rebuke me, that is all in my head. My head will not diffuse it for my prayer, will still be against the deeds of evildoers. Right? Well, what, is that? what does that mean? You know, I can pray, I can be, uh, I can be rebuked, I can be, you know, I can be, I can give anointing, I can be, give kindness, but I will still have to pray against the deeds of evil doers. That's correction. Right? That, that is the one that is always in my heart. Um, that, was the, that is the one that should always be in our hearts as, uh, as righteous leaders. As righteous leaders, we should not be bashful to correct. We, you know, we can correct in love. We can correct in kindness. We can you know, uh, correct in, 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 in a sacred way by invoking God in our correction. But we must correct. We must pray against the evil, the deeds of evil doers. Zeal plus love of neighbor equals correction. Right? In other words, we, we have to get that desire, the, the zeal for righteousness, but we have to put love in it. That's the way to correct. Why is it important? You are accountable to God. Here you go. Wisdom, chapter 6, 3 to 5. This is not to this is not to scare you, brothers and sisters, and let's leave it true. For your dominion was given you from the Lord, and your sovereignty from the Most High. He will search out your works and inquire into your plans, because as servants of His kingdom, you did not rule rightly or keep the law, or walk according to the purpose of God. He will come upon you terribly and swiftly, because severe judgment falls on those in high places. If we have this leadership, if we are given to be leaders, then we are accountable to God. Right? This is how our role for correction right, is, is, is being magnified. Right? There's a second one. Oops. Right. Is that? At the end of seven days, the, in Ezekiel, at the end of seven days, the word of the Lord came to me. Mortal, I have made you sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give them no warning, and do not speak to warn the wicked from their wicked ways in order to save their life, those wicked persons shall die for their iniquity. But their blood will require at your hand. But their blood I will require at your hand. Oh God, right? If you fail right, to talk to, to speak to one this wicked person, the wicked person will go to hell, right? But their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn, there's the, 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 the good part in it, the positive part. But if you warn the wicked and they do not turn from their wickedness, same thing, or from their wicked way, they shall die for their iniquity. But you will be, you will, but you will have saved your life. Okay. Right? In other words, you have to correct. 
and whether that correction is heeded or not is for the Lord to judge. But if you fail to correct, then you know that's then their blood I will require at your hand. Quite strong, very strong. But this magnifies the kind of correction, uh, the kind of correction that is placed at, at, in our in our milieu. That the the, the, cor the the extent, the seriousness of correction that is placed in our before us as leaders. Right? Okay, encouragement. Not only those, uh, uh, and I've said here, encouragement and perseverance. I, I put the two together because I think they are linked together. God encourages just as he encourages Jesus. God encouraged just as he encouraged Jesus. Matthew chapter 3, verse 17, a voice from the heaven opened up, this is my son whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. You know? Um, never, God is, is appreciating the work that his son is doing. I am well pleased. Matthew 17, 5, the transfiguration. I mean, you know, and, and the, there is this Moses, Elijah, and and there is this Jesus, you know, uh, given the given a, a taste of heaven, given a taste that with a bright light, with a with a shining light, giving giving uh, giving a, a premonition that this is heaven, that this is what's going to happen, as far as my son is concerned, that he will sit together with these mighty prophets of the time, Moses and Elijah. Romans 15, chapter, chapter 15, verse 5. God is the source of all encounters. Paul was exhorting, Paul was exhorting his, uh, his followers, his command. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may, with one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must persevere, right? Uh, and that is the fruit, the fruit of encouragement. Not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. That's in Romans. Right? Romans 15, chapter 5. Right? Encouragement produces the fruit of perseverance. When we encourage, yeah, we allow people to persevere in what they are doing. When we encourage, we lift them up to be able to do what Jesus is commanding them to do. The fruit of encouragement is a growth in perseverance. And, and many times, many times in the Bible, they talk always about perseverance. The Bible always talks about you have to persevere, that no matter the suffering is, you know, we, you have to persevere. And how can you en engender that perseverance? By encouragement. By telling them, by giving them hope that what they're doing is for the Lord. Okay, in conclusion, four kinds of good. Righteousness. We are called to a higher commitment in building relationship. We are answerable to our calling as shepherds. We have to correct and encourage. In other words, we are called to love God, not just like Him. You know, if you know, if God, if Jesus has a one, 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 um, one, one commentator said this. If, if Jesus has a Facebook, are you going to just like him and not listen and follow his words? And many of us listen to, you know, oh, okay, like, 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 like. It's easy to like, right? I don't, wow, I like Jesus. Something else, oh, I like what God has done in this circumstances. And because of that, I love to do what he has done for his people. We are called to be followers of Jesus, not just fans of Jesus. And if we are to become followers of Jesus, we should be able to take up his cross 
we should be able to take up our cross and follow Him. May God be praised. Amen. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you. Yeah. So, if, brothers and sisters, if you don't mind, we'll you know we'll entertain some questions, so we might uh, go a bit uh, over time. But uh, I think you know Marcy summarized it. The, the fourth one is what we are called. The fourth kind of good is what we are called to as household leaders. And do no evil. That already is a difficult uh, thing for us to do. You know, if you try and think, uh, what are the things that we are trying, are successful in trying to avoid evil? But not only that, we are supposed to do good. And not just do good, but do good with passion. Okay, so whether we are just uh, loving our, our neighbor or doing um, work for Angkop, these are the things that we can do as, go do as good things. Pray, read the scriptures, but we need to do it with passion. But on top of all of that, we need to do, to have the zeal for correction or zeal for righteousness. And that as household leaders, we are asked if we, we should love our members to the extent that we should be selfless. In other words, we should be thinking of them, what is for their own good. That if we love them, we should love them just as Jesus has loved us to the extent that we will try our best to bring them to salvation, which could include making corrections, correcting them when they are doing something that is not of the Lord, that will not bring them to salvation. And that, brothers and sisters, as a household leader, are some of the challenging things that we have to do as household leaders. And, but we, we just don't need to correct. The other thing too is we, we, we have to encourage them so that they will feel the love. We have to build our relationship with them. So I think, you know, that summarizes it uh, difficult as household leaders, but we are asked, we are called to demonstrate a zeal for righteousness. Does anybody have any questions in the chat? Do we have any? Let me see if we have. Yep, there's a lot to absorb. But I think, you know, that thing, if we can look at that as do no evil in terms of reflecting in ourselves, what are the things that we do? And do good, what are the good? Good things that we do with passion. Are there areas for improvement there? But also, what about our zeal for righteousness? And Marcy has summarized this. How do we achieve zeal for righteousness as far as ourselves are concerned? You know, uh, spiritual growth and all those things that he listed. But also what we should do for our members so that we can achieve or demonstrate zeal for righteousness. Any questions? Comments? Well, punctuality in meetings. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Should we correct even at the risk of spoiling a relationship? And that's a great question well. because that is actually what sort of prevents us or makes us think twice. Should I make the correction, but then I risk alienating the member or even upsetting my member to the point that he might leave my household? That is always our fear. But you, but you have to discern. You have to, again, the correction has to be, if it's just a procedural correction or a style, maybe you have to think twice. But if it is a sin, yeah, right? If it is a sin that he is committing, then it is, brothers and sisters, it is worth risking, I think, uh, spoiling that relationship. But again, if you have the relationship with your member, Hopefully he will not take it. If he, he should be able to appreciate that you are doing it out of your love for him, 
not as a very negative thing that you are doing. And again, you learn how to do that. There are ways how to do that. In the other talk, I think we said you do it. You do the sandwich approach. Maybe you encourage first or you do something positive. You, and then you try and do the correction and then end up with a positive comment about your member. So in that way, he doesn't feel that you are just negatively criticizing him, that you are being objective as a brother, as an older brother to him, uh, and that you are doing it out of love. So uh, give them what they need, but wrap, wrap it what they want. So, you know, you know Jesus is um, a very good example for that. Remember when he says, unless you eat, the flesh of the Son of Man or drink his blood, you will not go into heaven. It was, it was something that was so hard for the apostles to take. And Jesus confronted these apostles and says, how about you? Are you going to live like them as well? In other words, there's, a, there's always a way to throw back uh, the kind of, uh, the kind of uh, evil that, that uh, you have seen. There's, a, there's always a way to be able to correct or to dispel uh, the evil in our hearts. That's, uh, yeah, I think, you know, when you discern, and if we really love somebody, if you love your, a, your, your children, for example, if, you, if they are doing something bad, which is not for their own good, will you not correct? Mm -hmm. Will you not try and intervene and do something? Will you just let it be? I think that is what we are being asked. Mm. Again, in our previous teachings, we are brothers and sisters. You know, we first in talk, you know, we discussed about these things that we need to treat. We are the older, as household leaders, we are the, uh, you know, pastoral. We need to, we are pastoring our members and we want them and we should, uh, we, we love them and we should love them to the extent that we think of what is good for them. And eventually, what is good for them to bring them to that eternal life with our God. And, and true relationship does not, is not, and true relationship, if it, that relationship should be true, is not meant to be broken by a correction. But right? also, if you are doing a lot of encouragement, okay, this might be a good point. Maybe you do seven or ten encouragements, and you know, <laughs> hopefully you will only do one correction or two <laughs> corrections. Our mindset should be that we should be always be looking for the things to encourage. So if you have been encouraging that member a lot, so when you finally do one bit of correction, <laughs> that should that should more than balance it, right? No, don't. But if you always do the correction and just focus on the correction, <laughs> we may not feel the love that you are doing it out of love. <laughs> if there is evil, we should correct. It should, but, but we should not. Uh, it should not affect our relationship. Uh, in other words, I can correct you and we'll still be friends, diba? Uh, it should not, Marcy, but it does. Yeah. Especially members who are still journeying, you know, it, it's a very, it's a, it's a valid question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but so in other words, yeah, as I said, it depends on the extent of relationship, it's, if it is true. It, it depends on the degree of the relationship that you have with one another. Yeah. But my true friend, <laughs> you know, my true friend, my true relationship, they wouldn't mind if I correct. Right. Okay, do we have any other questions? I think it's okay for us to go over time anyway, since most of us are probably working from home. <laughs> you don't have to wake up early, except those who are, and by the way, let's, uh, uh, you know, uh, be mindful. But if there's no more, there's no more, um, I don't see any more questions from the chat. So let's close with a prayer. Again, may I remind everybody of our cluster uh, gathering um, this Saturday, please. Let us all join together. We need a powerful prayer to fight against this, uh, this virus. So let us uh, be solid this Saturday. We will pray the rosary. I think we've sent out the agenda. We will also have a short talk by 
my bang, but uh, let's pray together. Let's storm the gates of heaven with our prayer so that we can combat this virus. Anyway, for tonight, let's just close with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tonight, Lord, you gave us a difficult and challenging teaching, Lord. As household leaders, Lord, we ask and pray first that you guide us and send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us that we can do no evil, Lord. We are prone, we are weak, we are prone to failings, Lord. So we ask for your guidance. But also, Lord, it's not just doing no evil. We want to do good. We want others to see your face in us as household leaders, especially our members. So again, strengthen our will to be able to do good with passion. Do good in terms of the things that we can do to be spiritually uh, mature, to grow, to be spiritually strong, to, um, you know, receive your sacraments always, Lord. To be able to support our CFC community, to follow our covenant. But also, Lord, as household leaders, you have entrusted a flock to us that we guide us, Lord, to be able to be good leaders, shepherds of your flock, Lord. That we may be selfless, that we may think of them, that we may be sensitive to their needs, Lord. And also, Lord, that we may be bold enough and give us the skills to be able to deal with any correction that we have to give them. More importantly, Lord, allow us to have your eyes and your heart to look for the positive things that they do, that we can always encourage them. For we know positive encouragement builds them up, Lord. And that is important in uh, making sure that we have a good relationship with them. Lord, we ask all of this as you, the leaders that you have anointed over this flock. We will not shy away from the responsibility that you have given us, Lord. But we pray for your guidance and your Holy Spirit. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, of Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So good night, everybody. Good night, Paul. Good night. Good night, Paul. Good night. Thank you, Tito.